Hello guys, my name is JP. Welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. I have an idea for today. I want to design a new... A new actual spaceship. It's been a while. I usually do planes, weirdly enough. <clears throat> but I had an idea, so I want to go with it. Uh, first, I want to be using, I believe, this one will do. Uh, let's see. Not really used to using these parts, oddly enough. At least not for spaceship purposes. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, it has a monopropellant tank. Okay, I'm gonna need that. How much does it hold? 300. Okay. I will not be needing the cargo bay or the or the crew cabin, I don't believe. Mm, do I want to take that with me? <clears throat> I don't really think I'll need it because I'm actually going to be doing it like this. Hmm. I like the way this one looks all the time, but I don't like the fact that if I press spacebar accidentally one too many times, I lose a vital piece of my ship. So I want to take these, put them like that. I'm going to put batteries on the end of these. Uh, let's see. Atomic rocket motors. On there. Uh, let's see. Do I need anything on the end of these before I finish it off? That's what I'm trying to think of. Not really, I don't think. Hmm. Yeah, it seems fine to me. So I can just go ahead and these here, connect them to here, I'll just put nose cones here, and I'll put the what in the world did I do? Oh. This goes here, this goes here, and this can go here. That'll be my simplified, I'm not going to put forward ones like I usually do. Uh, how much SAS power does this thing have? 15? Compared to what am I used to, like 1.5? 0.5, 10, okay, so it should be powerful enough. Yeah, it's as powerful as a, a regular. Okay, I can deal with that. Uh, let's see. Do I need to put anything on the front of this, though? That's the question. So I can put this here. What needs to go there? I guess thinking ahead, like super future thinking ahead, I could put a docking port. That's pretty optimistic. A couple of lights. Uh, 
I will always prefer to use RTGs instead of solar panels. While they are ridiculously heavy by comparison, uh, the trade-off of not having to worry whether or not I have power in the dark is a good trade-off. Now, how to get this crazy thing into space. That is the tricky part. I guess, simply enough, uh, just a lot of power. Uh, let's see, I'm actually going to scale up the size pretty quickly here. Uh, will this fit here? Yes, it will. Okay. See, if that one fits there, then this one will fit there. And for this, I want to use... I suppose this would be the orbital stage. So I want to use like the 650. Yeah. That'll work. Uh, let's put some struts because that's kind of flimsy looking there. I'll attach them to this. Hope that holds. Uh, up we go. Now for the launch stage, uh, let's see, we need the large one. But for this, we're actually going to scale up to the supersize parts, the NASA parts. So I'm going to put this here. Supersize SAS for hopefully stability purposes, and then scale up to the giant ones. And I am nowhere near tall enough for this yet. Let's take it to the roof. Zoom out so I can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, we definitely need at least one of these. Like, that's minimum. Uh, let's see, what else will I be needing? Probably at least two of these for the sides. So let's get these on here. Now the best part about these is you can actually extend the tanks because they're not a uh, full booster. So I'm actually going to stick an extra one of these on each one. Also going to actually... Hmm, I don't know how well that would work. Keep in mind that I play in sandbox mode so I can be wasteful I can actually do things like this just because I want to basically make those probes so I don't have to worry about them uh, losing control when they separate they should hold pretty stable on separation That's completely in theory, though. We'll see if it actually works. And let's add another set of boosters here for this stage. 
some old school solid rocket boosters. This will add an extra 1300 power to go with the 4000 power. So we'll have 5300 launch power. That should be plenty. I say as I'm crashing into the ocean. So let me just do the usual for these. And then we just need the usual. I don't know if this should be high or low. I guess high is safer. Okay, let's zoom out so we can actually see the crazy thing. Okay, so the idea is to get this thing into space so that I can hopefully do some long range kind of stuff. Uh, two atomic rockets with plenty of fuel. 270, 135, and 360 on each side. So about, about a thousand fuel on this upper stage with plenty of RCS. So let's go long range. And let's see if this thing does not implode. Come on, spaceship. Okay. A little too heavy for you, huh? It's fine. We're gonna go anyways. <laughs> it It's still in one piece. The ship is still in one piece. Uh, I feel kind of uneasy about this now. It's going, sort of. Let's up the power a little bit. Wow, those boosters are not doing a whole lot. It's kind of going. It's going faster than I think it is, too. I mean, it's not like it's climbing a couple feet a second here. Whether or not this is going to be enough to get me into space, I highly doubt it. Uh, it, looks like, well, I it looks like I might have to adjust down, because... These boosters are about to run out. Oops! It's fine. Keep going. I lost the upper stage engines. They are gone. Hmm. I'm doing about as good as private commercial space flight right now in real life it has been one hell of a couple of weeks orbital lost a ship virgin lost a ship not a good day for space flight oh man this thing has the structural stability of an accordion just, just go go ship go Wiggly. Keep on going. We'll definitely make it to space, 
but orbit is highly unlikely. Unless I cut this now, dump it, and use this instead. Because they still have the RTGs, so they do have... They have power. I'm not con too concerned about what orbit they get, just as long as they don't come back down. And I can go ahead and use the fuel from this stage to... to keep that engine going a little bit longer. So I should try, try to get some kind of circular orbit here. See if I still know how to do that. 190, 144, what the hell am I doing? 160, 173, that's eh, close enough. Fifty nine second burn, so we want to fire at about forty seconds. So we can pick up the pace a little bit. Okay, get ready to fire in five, four, three, two, one. Boom. Like this we burn for about the same amount of time before the apoapsis as we do after the apoapsis. It kind of evens it out. Keep my eye on the orbit here. Because really we can just stop once we hit a circle. I just kind of use that as a guideline. And there. We got 200, 150. Wow, that's pretty bad. I never claim to be good at this game. I want that to be known ahead of time. But there's still plenty of fuel. I can circularize, circularize that later on. What I do need to do is transfer all this fuel in, though. So that the engine can actually continue to be used. Got about half a tank. It's not too bad. But they do have power and they still have an engine, so worse things have happened. But probably at some point we'll have to go launch a rescue mission. I can build basically the same one again, fix the staging, uh, fix the launch capability, and add a crew cabin. And we should be able to get these guys back. Oh, uh, well, it failed, but at least I still got to space. So I'm doing slightly better than orbital. So, stuck at orbital, I still beat you. That'll do it for today's failure of an episode. Thank you guys for watching, my name is JP, and I will see you next time with a rescue mission, hopefully. So long.